everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J, and today we're looking at the first issue of the Ruby comic that DC just released. We used to be fans of the web series, but we feel like it's really lost focus in later seasons and we haven't been keeping up with it. But it turns out DC is making a Ruby comic and we were interested in seeing what it had to offer. However, after reading it, I'm not really sure who this book was made for. It's basically a recap of the first three volumes, and a poorly done recap at that. It basically skips over volumes 1 and 2 and just spoils the ending of volume 3, but without all the context necessary to care about what's going on. So spoiler warning in case you haven't seen Ruby yet but are interested in it. If you're already familiar with Ruby, you probably don't need this kind of recap, but if you're a newcomer to Ruby, this comic doesn't offer enough context to make this book worthwhile. Kind of like how M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender tried to shove the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender into one movie, and the comic is about as effective as the movie was. Ruby narrates the entire comic and most of the art is splash pages, and these splash pages don't really reflect much on what Ruby is saying, so it comes off as disjointed. For example, there's a page where Ruby is talking about semblances, but it's over a splash page of them fighting a Grimm and it doesn't actually show their semblances, Ruby just tells us about them. Blake is just standing there while Ruby tells us that she can create shadow clones of herself. At least they showed Weiss summoning, although that's not the extent of Weiss's abilities. It's just something she can do with her semblance. They could have had the art go along with what Ruby was saying, like show Yang getting hit and then dishing it back out. But the whole comic is like this. Ruby will mention something like dust, the history of remnants, the faunus, but is vague on the details, and it's all over these splash pages of them fighting Grimm. The art doesn't connect to the narration, so none of this is very helpful to a newcomer. On top of that, this book reuses art a lot. For example, there's this two-page spread that doesn't have any narration over it, but the following pages are single panels from that two-page spread. It comes off as pretty lazy. It kind of feels like they were trying to make cool posters instead of sequential comic book art. On top of those problems, this art isn't very good. The anatomy and proportions are all over the place. Some of it looks alright, but a lot of it is really out there. Like this panel with Weiss. Her head is a little small for her body, her face is scrunched up and elongated? These robots have really janky hands, and it's all the same robot, just copied and pasted. This comic was published by DC, so I would expect better quality than this. This book is only 99 cents, which is a lot better than what most comic books are going for, even digital comics, but it's still very disappointing. Is the whole series gonna be like this? But the problems don't end with the art. They don't do a very good job of introducing the characters, and maybe they felt like they didn't have enough time, but they could have at least had the art reflect who the characters are. It tries to introduce the four main characters at least, but the rest of the characters are just kind of there. For example, Nora is a character who has a lot of energy. She's often bouncing off the walls and she drinks maple syrup straight from the bottle. They could have had the art reflect that in the book, but when we see her, she's just standing there with everyone else, who are also just standing there, not being very expressive. Does this look like a character who chose maple syrup? I don't think so. There's also a lot of things in this book that are not accurate to what happened in the show. For example, we see Penny wearing a Beacon Academy uniform, but she never went to Beacon Academy, and that's not the only inconsistency. If the comic was trying to do its own thing, that would be fine, but it's clearly trying to be a recap. So these inconsistencies are strange. There was no need for it. They could have had art that was show accurate instead. The comic starts with Ruby reminiscing about her childhood. I like like these first few panels, the art is really nice, especially compared to the rest of the book, and it does a good job at conveying Ruby's personality through the set design. The lighting effect is nice, and also the lamp that's giving off this glow is really cute. Overall, it's not a bad way to start the comic. After this, it jumps around in time, and it's a little choppy. First it shows her being a huntress, and her giving exposition about the world of Remnant, but then it cuts back to her childhood, and the loss of her mother, and then it cuts back to her at Beacon Academy. Maybe instead of all these time skips, they could have shown the moment where she made the decision to be a huntress, have her be inspired with the stories of her parents' adventures. Maybe they could have told them to her as a bedtime story. It could have been a more natural way to deliver this exposition, while also giving the reader more context to this family, instead of just this family photo. This exposition is very clunky and not even show accurate. Like, the comic implies that Beacon Academy is the only Huntsman Academy, but all four kingdoms have an academy. This could have been phrased better. We also
also get some pretty forced dialogue, like Yang saying, Come on, miss, I got special permission to enter Beacon Academy two years early by order of Professor Ozpin. They really couldn't have found a better way to convey that information. Plus, newcomers aren't going to know that Professor Ozpin is the head of the school. Sure, they can pick up context clues, but Ozpin is one of the most important characters, so they probably should have given it more thought than this. After this, they try to introduce the other girls of Team Ruby. These descriptions are pretty rambly, but they don't end up saying much. I think they were trying to give Ruby some character through her dialogue, which isn't a bad idea, but they also could have told us the same information with less words, which I think is good for a comic. Plus, I don't really think this sounds like Ruby, based on watching the show. That and they choose to focus on some weird things. Like with Weiss, we're only told that she gets good grades, which is nice for her, but is that the most important thing about her character? Is that what the audience really needs to know about her? They don't mention that she's the heiress to the Schnee Dust Company, or that she could have lived a cushy life, but chose to fight monsters instead, and chose to follow her own path. There's a lot of more relevant things they could have talked about instead of she gets good grades. And I'm not even sure what they were trying to say with Blake. I guess she's a cool cat? There's actually a lot going on with Blake, and they chose to talk about none of it. This comic feels very confused. Like it doesn't know what it should be focusing on. To be fair, neither does the show. But you'd think a recap of the first three seasons would know to focus on things like the White Fang, and Ozpin, and these characters' connections to them, and how all these story elements connect to each other. The comic goes on to the Battle of Beacon, kind of. It just shows Ruby being sad and telling us that there was a big battle. It's weird that they skipped over the endings of the first two volumes, and went straight to the Battle of Beacon without any kind of build-up. They're only now telling us about Cinder and Adam, and they totally skip over Roman, even though he was the best bad guy, in our opinion. Opinion. The comic also spoils who doesn't make it out of the Battle of Beacon, at least some of them, but it didn't do anything to introduce these characters or tell us why we should care about them, so it doesn't really have an impact. Plus, if any newcomers decide to watch the show after reading this book, they're going to know when these characters are introduced that they don't make it past Volume 3. Afterwards, Ruby walks home to Patch, because the comic also removed Crow, and the Silver Eyes, and the Dragon Grim. What's even the point of this book? They could have had all of those splash pages where they were fighting Grimm be splash pages or actual art of the Battle of Beacon, and had Ruby narrating what was going on and introducing all the players. But instead we get this disjointed mess. Ruby briefly goes over where all of her teammates ended up, but the comic also changes it so Yang only lost her hand instead of most of her arm. And that's not the only change they made. It also shows Tai seeing them off when Ruby decides to leave Patch with what's left of Team Juniper when in the show they left without telling Ty where they were going or that they were leaving. And Ty's anatomy is way off. His arm looks really wonky and they forgot to draw his other hip, and it's just really sloppy overall. But the comic ends with them heading into volume 4. Overall, this comic was very messy and confusing, and I don't think it gave us a good idea of what this series is going to be. Are the rest of the issues going to be more recap, or are they going to try to be more of an adaptation of the later seasons? What are they going to do without characters like Crow? Is he just gonna show up whenever the comic decides they need him? Is this whole comic going to be splash pages? I'm also not sure what audience they're going for with this book. Do they want existing Ruby fans? Because I don't see why they would need this. And if they're going for new fans, this was not the way to introduce people to this franchise. They skip over important plot details, they don't introduce most of the characters, and they do a weird job of introducing the characters they do talk about. I actually feel like the only thing this book did was spoil the ending of season 3. Mostly the Battle of Beacon. Maybe this book could have been supplementary material, like of Ruby and Yang during their childhood, or other adventures at Beacon that we didn't get to see in the show. That could have been fun, but I don't think we can recommend the book the way it is right now. If you're interested in Ruby, you might as well just watch the show. The first season isn't very long at all, plus you can watch it for free on YouTube, which is nice, because the series is pretty flawed. It's too much to go into here, but the first few volumes are pretty charming. But that's our review. What did you guys think? Are you a fan of Ruby? Have you read this book? What did you think of it? We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye guys.